Dell famously makes PCs. It's one of the things, <laughs> that, if not the thing, that Dell is probably best known for. And so the first question that I would like to kick things off with is for our listeners who are interested in data science, AI applications, a lot of open source, the first thing that might come to a lot of listeners' mind is Unix-based systems. And so why would somebody why should somebody be considering a PC instead, in particularly maybe even a Windows machine? Yeah, well, let me go first, and Ish will have his take on it as well. I, I would say that you have to start with what are your objectives, right? Um, if you look at the data science and, well, the software development community at large, um, let's just look at the facts. Windows is still the most popular OS for software devs, right? It's about 64% the last time I checked of software devs use Windows for development, which is uh, you know still the leading number out of all of the uh, OS platforms. It is, yes, the standard in the enterprise and for you know consumers on PCs. So it's familiar, it's friendly, user-friendly, great for beginners in the data science field. Um, it's compatible with popular apps, right? Who doesn't want to use productivity apps, you know, there's other data manipulation and visualization apps that run better on, on Windows. And then at the end of the day, it's, as I said, it's a standard in the enterprise. So if I'm thinking from an IT management perspective, you get the, uh, you know, the enterprise security integrations are much more easy, right, with, with Windows. But that's not it, right? Because let's uh, not kid ourselves. I think if you look at uh, large ML and data science deployments, I, I think 96% of them are still running on Linux-based or uh, Unix-based servers. So if you are doing large deployments, you know Linux is probably still the platform that you want to be developing in because best practices, you want to be developing on the platform that is being used for production environments, right? But I would say at the same time, there's an alternative, right? There's Windows subsystem for Linux. And WSL2 specifically, I think starts closing the gap, right? In all of those um, uh, scenarios, right? Because you can run uh, a Linux kernel directly on Windows. So if you have Ubuntu running natively, guess what? You now have all of your Linux uh, command line tools that you can run right there on Windows. And so you have best of both worlds. You have all your productivity, and other you know ease of use benefits on Windows, and you don't lose um, all of the benefits you get working uh, with with Linux for data science uh, um, you know solutions. So I think that is something that's worth considering. I think WSL's use is still pretty small out there today, but that's an alternative, right, for someone who's on Linux, used to Linux, and wanting to bridge the gap, right? Then last but not least, this is something I touched on briefly in our last episode, John. If you are building for PCs, if you're building apps for PCs, software developers, it goes back to the same best practice. You want to be building in the environment that you're uh, going to have your apps in production. You want to be building in Windows, right? Let's look at the number, 60 million PCs with Linux, 1.6 billion PCs with Windows. That's less than 3%. Linux, right? So, and you get all your IDEs, VS Code, Visual Studio, PyCharm, um, in you know IntelliJ IDEA, etc. They all run natively on Windows. So, um, you know, it sounds like I'm making a case for Windows here. I'm not a Windows, I mean, not a Microsoft employee, but I have to say, at the end of the day, it comes down to what you want to do, right? There's a place for Linux for data scientists, and there's a place for Windows. Yeah, that would. That was really well argued, Sharish. Thank you. I was. It, it seems kind of like uh, th there was. I went to Oxford University for my PhD, and they have something called the Oxford Union there, which is a debate club. And I went and watched <laughs> some of their debates. And you sounded that sounded like kind of opening remarks. So you just get you have all the stats. Uh, very compelling argument, uh, Ish. What do you have to say? Are you oh, are you on the other side of the argument? <laughs> I think my, mine is probably a lot less articulate because it's basically por qué no los dos. Like it's why pick one thing when you don't have to pick one thing, right? It's uh, with WSL, it's like, what do you need? Just kick into it. There is no dual boot. It's just sort of in the same space. 
And it's a very fluid transition back and forth. Like you can bop around in WSL and Windows as you need. And I'm using very technical terms here. Um, but I, I think the biggest thing is, you know, you can hit a nail with a wrench, but why would you if you have a hammer, right? Like you, you've got the right tool for the right job at the right time. And I think that's going to be a theme in this conversation, John. Like it's Dell's whole point of value in this whole brave new world we live in is choice. It's like you get to decide what you want to do. You want to throw Linux on your device? Do it. Want to do Windows on your device? Do it. You want both? Do that too. Whatever works for you. 